I've already opened my Softflex Exotic Blooms kit and I'm going to be making a couple of items from it today. Hello, welcome to The Stylish Maker. My name's Carol. As I said, I couldn't wait to open my Exotic Blooms kit. It was too exciting. <laughs> I actually opened it on a Zoom call with my Jewel Box group a few days ago and it's really lovely. I love what's inside it. I'm going to show you what's inside the pack and then I'm going to make some pieces with the contents of the pack. So let's get making. First off, let's start by looking at what was in the pack. And I cannot ignore this most amazing beautiful centerpiece. Isn't it absolutely stunning? It's actually made from shell. I love the colours, it's absolutely beautiful. That is going to be my focal, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Next I have some acrylic flowers, I've got these beautiful pink ones, and there's only two of those, and I've also got some of these lilies, two of those as well. We've got a couple of these beautiful little silver tassels and once again we've got some of these gorgeous flowers and what else have we got? Some bead caps. These are quite large, they're probably almost two centimetres across. We're just going back up here, we've got a disco ball. Now I really really wish we had two of these because I would use them in my necklace but unfortunately there's only one in the pack. We've got some of these acrylic flowers, they have a hole in the centre here. So when they're strung, they'll sit that way. We've got some of these beautiful crystals. The hole is also through the centre there. Some bead caps. And these beads are very interesting. It took me a while to figure out what they were. Hopefully you can see it. I think they're acrylic, an acrylic bead with rhinestones all around the outside. They're very, very interesting. I have six of these white cubes. Four of these long rice-shaped beads. That's a gorgeous colour, that orange. And these ovals are also a gorgeous colour. But I'm not sure if I'm going to use the orange. It doesn't really go with the pink on the centre focal. These are some large rondelles, glass ones with faceting and an AB finish. And these are gorgeous pink teardrops. They go beautifully, don't they? <laughs> I've got some yellow, smaller faceted rondelles. And there's some charms here. I've got two of these beautiful flower charms and two of these as well. As well as that I've got some ear hooks and a clasp and some crimp tubes. The soft flex this month is a white quartz and I've got two strands of green beads here. Now this bag the strands have come undone so I will tip them out. Do I, no, I actually don't want to tip them out because they'll go everywhere. So there are three strands in here and as I said they've come undone. So there's a strand of little three, three or four millimetre, probably four millimetre round coloured beads. There's a strand of blue seed beads and there's also, try not to drop them so they don't go everywhere. These are shell, I think, rondelles. There's also a couple of bigger beads in there as well. I'm not going to take them out because, as I said, I don't want to drop them everywhere. And I don't think I'm going to use those ones. I want a big, chunky necklace and these ones are quite small. I think we'll start with a pair of earrings. And as soon as I saw these, I thought, I have to use those for earrings. And I think we'll put the bead caps on top, like that. Now I really love the tassels, but we also have the flowers, so which one should we use? Should we put the tassel inside, or should we put the flower? Oh, it's a big decision, I don't know. What we'll do is grab an eye pin and open it. And I'm going to put the tassel onto the eye pin and close up my loop. So like that. And then we'll try and see what this looks like. So that's what that looks like. 
How do you feel like about that as an earring? I'll make another one using the flower and we'll see which one we like best. So opening my eye pin, popping on my flower and closing it. Now I know that these both have some gold on them but I don't care. I'm going to mix my metals, that's fine. So we'll put on the flower and another bead cap. Okay, so there are my two. Which one do you like best? I think I prefer the tassel. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and make a pair of tassel earrings. And so I will take that off. Open my eye pin again. And replace my flower with my tassel. Now I am actually thinking that one of those little coloured beads might be quite good on top of this bead cap here. So, here we go. I'm trying not to spill them everywhere. And maybe that colour. Let's have a look. Hmm. That colour or the orange or the pale pink. There's always lots of decisions to make when you're making jewellery. I don't like that one, so we'll take that one off. But maybe the pale pink might look better. My eye pin's got a bend in it and that bead will not go on. So we'll straighten that bend and try again. Which one do you prefer? I think I prefer the dark pink, this one, this one here. I'm going to go with that. So now I have to find another one on this strand here. So it probably would have been easier to take everything out, but I didn't. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm going to put it all back in before it gets out of control. Tuck it all down and we'll put it aside. <laughs> so I have my earring all ready to go and I'm going to make a bend in the top of the wire. So just making sure that everything is pushed down, putting my thumbnail on the top there and just bending the wire over so it's at a right angle like that. Then I'm going to take my flush cutters and I'm going to cut at about a centimetre from the bend making sure I hold, using the flush side of my cutters and making sure I hold both ends of my wire. And I'll just put that aside for a minute. And then I'm going to take this one and do exactly the same. Now when I make earrings, what I do is I measure the two off cuts. And that way I know that the earrings are going to be the same length. So I'm going to take my piece I just cut off and I'm going to make sure that the ends uh, equal. I'm going to take my flush cutters making sure that my flush side is facing the work that I want to keep which it is when I do that and remove that piece and snip. And that way both my off cuts are the same size so I know that my earrings will hang at the same length. Now I've done that I want to make a loop so I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to put the end of the wire in the jaws of the pliers like that. Make sure it's not sticking up because if you if it's sticking up it won't give you a nice round loop. Now if you haven't made loops before I do have a video all about making the perfect loop so I will leave that linked below for you. I've got my wire in the jaws there. I'm going to stick my thumb in there and twist around, remove my pliers, pop them back in and twist again. There's my two components with the loops on the top. Now all I have to do is attach an ear wire to them. I'm just going to feed it on this way. Like that. And then I'm going to use my pliers to close up that little gap there. Just like that. I'm going to repeat for the other one. There's my pair of little dangle earrings. What do you think? Do you like them? <laughs> I'm going to put them aside for now and I'm going to get on with making a necklace. I think what I'm going to do is make my necklace with some wire components rather than stringing it just because I think it will lend itself better to what I have in mind. I'm going to attach my focal with a jump ring but before I do that I think that what I will do is use a component to attach it to and I've got this one here. It's got flowers on it as well so I think it goes with the exotic blooms theme. And normally you'd use it this way, I'm actually going to use it upside down. So I'm going to put that there, it's a good start. So let's do that. I've got here some jump rings. These are 6mm jump rings, so I will just take one of those. 
and this one just happens to be open. If you haven't used jump rings before, I'll leave you a link in the description box to a video about that as well. All of the techniques I'm using today, I'll leave linked below. So opening your jump ring, feeding on this beautiful, beautiful focal piece and also my component connector and closing that up. So there we go. Now I'm going to bring in my beadboard and I'm going to lay some stuff out so that we can decide how we'd like the beads laid out. I'd like to start with some of these. I think they're very cool. They're quite unique and I do like them. I think we'll be, go with these. Whoops. <laughs> Even though these are red, there is red in this focal. There's also pink and the AB finish on these beads is actually reading as pink. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. Right, so we'll pop those in there. I also really want to use these pink teardrops because I think these are amazing and they also go really well with the pink. And I really love to clash. <laughs> I love putting red and pink together, so why not? <laughs> that would make a good component, a good first component. But I think it needs some bead caps or something to break up the beads. So what I might do is put one of these bead caps on either side of my big red bead that and I also think that I might put something between those two I've actually got some of these little rondelles here daisy spacer type things and I might pop one of those in between there as well I like this but I feel like it needs one more thing and I don't think that this works I think it's too big and I don't think this works either no that just looks weird yeah it looks like a crown on the bead that and it actually takes away from that bead so I don't want to do that I do have some little bicones here some little glass bicones in the color silver so let's try that it's hard to tell when they're lying in the little ditch there but I think I think that works Let's try it. Let's make it up and see. I'm going to use some 20 gauge half hard wire to make my components. This is a beadsmith one. I use half hard wire for all of the components that I make because it's not too hard that I can't make a loop and it's not too soft so it will hold its shape. So it's a good medium temper wire to use to make components. Now I'm going to make a loop and this time I'm going to use my one step looper because it's quicker. <laughs> Just taking my one step looper. If you haven't seen this one before, I'll leave you a video all about how to use it and how it changed my life. There is my loop. It's a 2.25 millimeter loop. The other thing about using the one step looper is that you will get consistency in the size of your loops. I'm going to thread on my beads. put your bead caps on make sure they face the bead now I need to find the hole in this one there it is because it all looks like holes <laughs> and that's what I have now I'm going to make a loop on this end so feeding on my feeding it through the hole at the back of my one step looper just making sure that it's nice and close to those beads do be careful though, if you are using your one step looper next to a little bicone like this, you need to leave a tiny bit of space because otherwise when the jaw comes around, it can shave a little bit off your bead there. So just be a little bit careful. And I just need to close up that loop a little bit. And there is my first component. Now I need another one of those, so I'll go ahead and make another one. So there's my components and I'm not going to join them together yet because I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them. Now I noticed that there's no dark green beads in this set and I really want to mirror the green in here. So I'm going to add a couple of 6mm glass beads that I have. So probably four will be enough. These are 6mm smooth round beads. And I think I'll pop a teardrop between each one. Now you do need to make sure that your teardrops are all going the same way. I quite like that. And I might add some of my daisy spaces in there. So maybe between each one. 
Now I do want my components to be almost the same length and I can see that this one will be shorter than that one. So I'm going to add some more of my little bicones to each end. So one there, one there. And I have actually put two on the side, so yeah, so I quite like that. Let's do that. So once again, I'm going to make a loop, I'm going to string it on, and I'm going to make a loop in the other end, just like I did with the others. There's one other thing that I didn't say with this one, and I have to go back and do, is that you want your both of your loops to face the same way. And that will just mean that everything hangs properly. So I'll go ahead and do that with my others and I'll make another one of those components. Now I have that part done and I think I'm going to add some extra pieces to this. To, I'm going to use these dangles, I think, these little charms, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm actually going to repeat this, I think, to go up here. What do you think? So I'm going to go ahead and make those components exactly like these ones. Now I need to decide, obviously this isn't long enough, do I make more components or do I use some chain? What am I going to do? Where am I going to put the dangles? All of those decisions need to be made. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some little bits of chain and I'm going to make a little loop, not unlike the necklace that I have on actually. You can see here, I have these little loops of chain, but this time I'm going to hang a dangle off it. I've got these beautiful flowers and I think they go so perfectly with the Exotic Blooms theme. And I might add some others as well. By the way, if you want to make this necklace that I'm wearing, I'll leave you a link in the description box for the tutorial. Uh, the earrings, I can't leave you a link for these because I made them in my jewel box group on a live stream. If you want to see this tutorial, you will have to join the group. And I may as well talk about the group while I'm here. In my membership group, there's two levels of, uh, of membership. There's the In The Loop group and there is the Jewelry Junkie. If you're a Jewelry Junkie, you get to have a Zoom call with me once a month as well. All groups, you also get to have a weekly vlog, you get updates, you get a chat, community chat, where you can chat with others, share your work and comment on what others are making and offer advice etc and if you have a question that you want me to answer you can ask me in the chat as well as well as that there's lots of extra little bits and pieces so if you want to join that group I'll leave you a link in the description box all right back to the necklace so I always end up with little odd bits of chain left over so I'm going to use some of those to make these little swags there's my little piece of chain and it measures let's see it's about three and a half centimeters long which is about an inch, not quite an inch and a half, doesn't matter, any length will do. So what's important though is that you have an uneven number of links because then you can attach your dangle to the centre link. And I'm going to start off by putting on some 4mm jump rings so I can attach. So I'm just going to take my chain and I'm going to add my 4mm jump ring to the end of it, which essentially adds an extra link to each end. And I want to do that with all of my pieces. All right, now I have four pieces of chain that are the same length and they have a four millimeter jump ring on either end. I am going to attach these to my necklace. So just bring my necklace back and I'm going to use some six millimeter jump rings. So I think what I will do is attach it here with a four, six millimeter, got four millimeter jump rings on the brain today. Now before I do that I might actually attach my charm to my piece of chain, it's easier. So I counted these links and it has 11 links so I'm going to attach it to number 6 because that is the centre link. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that one there. Oh it doesn't want to go on, there we go, come on, there we go. And I'm going to put one of my little flower charms on. And closing up my jump ring. And while you've got it held like that, you can see that the both pieces of your chain are the same length. You can see my four millimeter jump rings there are hanging at the same length. It's just a good way to double check. So I'll repeat that for the other charm as well. And what we're going to do is attach that to this. But I think we'll also attach this. But I think we'll use two jump rings to do it. I think it'll sit better if we use two. So just taking my jump ring, this is another six millimeter one opening it and feeding on the end 4mm jump ring and I'm going to attach that to this loop of my 
connector, the right hand side one, closing up my jump ring. So that's what I have now. Then I'm going to connect my connector here, or my component that I made as well. So I'm going to use another 4mm, 6mm jump ring to do that. Goodness me. So taking my component and popping it on, and popping that on to the loop here. Now you want to make sure that it's going to sit above your piece of chain there, so make sure you attach it to the top so the chain is hanging down. Otherwise it will be twisted. That's what I have now. Now I'm going to bring this one up and attach it to here and I'm going to attach the next one and also another charm. I'm going to do some other stuff first. Let's just pop that down. Okay, I've got these two leaf charms. I'm going to attach those to a piece of my chain as well, just using the same method that I used before. I'm going to stick that one up there. And if I put this one here, these are single sided so I have to make sure they go on the right way. Or would it look better the other way around? So if I put the leaf here and the flower there. Hmm. I think I like it the way I've got it, so I'm going to do it this way. Right, so I'm going to take another 6mm jump ring and open it. And this time I'm going to add this 4mm jump ring here. Now it's important that you do this in the right order so that it hangs right. Then I'm going to add this component, uh, loop, loop. Then I'm going to add this component, loop. Then I'm going to add this 4mm jump ring. And hopefully that will hang the right way. So there's what we have so far. And I know that this isn't hanging down very much. We may need to use a longer piece of chain, but we'll see. We'll just see how we go. It's all about trial and error, right? All right, now I'm going to attach this one to this one and using the same process. So I need to make sure that my charm is hanging the right way before I do anything else, which it does look like it is. So I'm going to attach that first. Then I'm going to put on my loop of my component, my loop of my top component, and that's all I need. Closing up my jump ring. There it is now, and I'm actually thinking that maybe I need to add some more jump rings just to make that sit better, because that chain is quite tight. So I might do that, I might add another 6mm jump ring here, and here, and here, and here. I'm going to open my 4mm jump ring that's attached to the end of my chain. Then I'm going to put it back on because it fell off, and I'm going to close that jump ring again. I'm not attaching it to anything. Then I'm going to take a 6mm jump ring, and I've got one here that's open, and I'm going to put that onto there. So the 4mm is going onto the 6, and now the 6 is going to go back up onto the 6. I hope that all makes sense. Hopefully it will once it's done. You can see it. I had my pliers in the way, so I couldn't get it on. What I did was I opened my 4mm jump ring and I added a 6mm jump ring in there. Do you think I need to add another one? I think I do. I'm going to do the same thing to the other end. Now when you reattach it, make sure you get it on the right side of that jump ring. So you want the two pieces of chain together. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other piece of chain on this side as well. There we go. That looks better. Much nicer. 
to avoid doing that full stop you could make your chain longer which you know I could have done but I already had it on so what I'm going to do on the other side is add my six millimeter jump rings to my four millimeter jump rings on the end of the chain and then I don't have to do that Whew. we'll go ahead and do that <laughs> okay so I have my chain here and I'm going to take a six millimeter jump ring and add it to each end it's much quicker and easier to do it this way but when you're designing a necklace or a piece of jewelry you have to be flexible and you have to know that things will change there it is with its six millimeter on either end and of course I've done that to this one as well okay let's put this side together so the first thing I'm doing is taking another jump ring and I know this got really confusing because I had to add those extra jump rings but hopefully this time it will be a bit clearer I'm going to put on my charm first so I'm adding the six millimeter jump ring from my charm from my chain like that then I'm going to add that to my upper left connector loop closing that up so that's what I have now and now I'm going to add my component to here so I'm going to take another six millimeter jump ring and I'm going to connect it to the bottom part or the top part sorry of my connector loop so just holding my chain out of the way and now I'm going to put on my component and I'm going to close up my loop so that's what that looks like so you can see there I've got my two jump rings coming out of that top loop now I'm going to connect this end and I'm going to connect the next connector and the other piece of chain so taking another six millimeter jump ring opening my jump ring I'm going to feed on my chain first then I'm going to feed on my other piece of chain making sure my dangle is facing the right way my charm and then I'm going to feed on my component and then my next component and everything should be in the right order so it hangs right so just closing up my jump ring now there we go that's what we have now and we're going to hook this one up here so taking another six millimeter jump ring feeding on the end of my chain just double checking my dangle is facing the right way putting on the end of the component and the next component so that's what I have now and guess what it's round the wrong way <laughs> so I'm going to take it off and turn it round that happens <laughs> that's better <laughs> now there's a question do I want to do another swag of chain with another charm let's have a look I don't think so because I think that is quite long enough for my focal I think that I will just go ahead and I think I might just add some chain got another piece of this chain here and I need to decide how long I want it but what I'm going to do is attach it to one end first and then I can decide how long I want it so I'm going to take my take another six millimeter jump ring and open it and just attach my component here and the end of the chain and I'm going to close that jump ring so that is what I have so what I want to do now is decide how long I want it so I'm going to hold it up and put this one around the back of my neck there's my center I think about there is probably the right length it's probably about the right length for for wearing with a uh, turtleneck anyway <laughs> if I was wearing an open neck shirt I want it shorter but I can always clip my clasp into another loop or link of my chain so I can actually make it shorter so I'm going to go with that so I'm going to hold it there untangle it and I'm actually going to cut it there now I know that I haven't got a clasp on yet but this is there's method to my madness 
Okay, so I'm cutting it there. I'm going to put that piece of chain aside and move this. Now I'm going to add this end to the other end of my necklace. I know it seems mad, I know. <laughs> so just putting on my jump ring and feeding on the other component just like I did with the other side. So there it is so far. Now I want to show you a trick to measuring how much room your clasp will take. So if I hold it like this, I can see that everything is all nice and even, they're all the same. And this is my center link. And I'm just gonna put, I've got an eye pin here, I'll just pop that through there for now. Just so that I know that's the center. Now I'm going to make up my clasp component. So I'm going to take a four millimeter jump ring. And where's my clasp gone? There it is. Now I'm going to open my 4mm jump ring and feed on my clasp. I always find 4mm jump rings quite hard to find the little slits. <laughs> this one's easy because it's not aligned, but sometimes they're really hard to find. So just opening my jump ring, putting it on, and closing it up. And I always say this, but I'm going to say it again. You could use a 6mm here. I just prefer to use a 4 to attach my clasp. Just the way I like it. Okay, now I'm going to grab another six millimeter jump ring. And this one's nicely closed, is it? Where did it go? Oh, it's not quite. See, give it a squeeze, see if it can. Nope, it's not gonna play ball, so I'll have to close it properly. Sometimes just giving it a little squeeze like that will pop it into place, but not today. Okay, so I'm going to do up my clasp or we'll put the jump ring into my clasp as though it's going to be done up. Now I'm going to measure it. So I'm going to grab a couple of eye pins or wire or whatever you have in handy and I'm going to put one end through or one through my four millimeter and one through my six millimeter and I'm going to stretch it out and you can see there it takes up exactly two centimeters or close enough anyway, within about a millimeter. So I know now that I have to add, take away two centimeters from my chain. However, what I also might do is add a f another four millimeter on each side. So if I add two four millimeters, that's another eight millimeters. So I'm going to remove approximately three centimeters of my chain from the center. So 1.5 centimeters on either side of my chain, of my center. There's my center. And here is 1.5 centimeters. And I'm going to take my memory wire cutters and I'm going to cut the chain right there. And on the other side as well. And I can do that. Best way to do that is by hanging it and cutting there. See, that's why I end up with little chain ends, isn't it? So now my chain should be the right length. And I'm going to take some four millimeter jump rings and I'm going to open them and put on my clasp. I'm right-handed and this necklace is a one-way thing. It, you know, you couldn't put it on the wrong way because it wouldn't show the beautiful design of the, uh, of the focal. So I'm going to put my clasp on my right-hand side. If you're left-handed, it's easier to open a clasp with your left hand. So make sure you put it on the right side. So I'm going to take my four millimeter jump ring that is attached to my clasp, thread that on, and then I'm going to attach the right side of the end of the chain. Now I'm going to close up my jump ring. Just double checking it's closed and I'm going to repeat that for the other side. So opening my four millimeter jump ring and I'm going to feed on my chain and then my six millimeter jump ring. I need an extra pair of hands. <laughs> there we go. And closing that jump ring up. Here's my necklace. I think it turned out really good. I love the color of this focal. It's amazing and the beads work so well with it. And of course, here's my earrings. Let me know in the comment section whether you like it, if you would have done something different, possibly made the chain longer. <laughs> 
and if you want to buy this kit the blossom exotic blooms kit from softflex there is a discount code for you and that is bloom so you get five dollars off if you buy it using that that code i'll leave you a link in the description box to a blog post which will contain everything links to everything that i use today as well remember to check me out on facebook and instagram by the way the rest of the beads won't go astray because i will make something probably with my group in a live stream so if you want to check that out you can join and that link is in the description box as well as i was saying check us out on on facebook and instagram it is the stylish maker thank you so much for watching today have a wonderful day and i will see you again next week